This is the course that I wish existed when I started 25 years ago. Whether it's in metal, it's moving steel around, it's putting filler on as accurately and as efficient as possible, or it's sanding. Well, you're in the right place because this is what this one's about. The restoration process can obviously be very daunting. You know, we've got to go from something like this right through to a painted car behind me. But throughout that journey, one of the most important things is bodywork. So there's two sides to bodywork. There's the metal side, and then there's the paint preparation side. Here we have this jag behind us. Metalwork's been done. The panels are aligned, it's gapped, it's all set up, ready to go. So this needs filler work, polyester work, primer work, sanding, block sanding, all the way through to paint. So we can end up with something like this, the green barracuda behind us, where the surface is all run through, body works nice, it's all aligned as the designer intended. The exterior paintwork is the most important thing on a vehicle. It is the first thing that anyone sees. It makes the car. Wheels can come and go, motors can come and go. However, the exterior form, the essence of the car, the feeling that that car makes, the elegant, the grace, the muscle, the speed, everything created on the exterior of that car comes from the bodywork. The bodywork is the car. It is the sculptural form that that vehicle is. It is the first thing that someone sees. It is the most important thing to get right. Let's use splines, let's make it right. This training is focused on the use of splines. The tool itself is very simple. But what is it? Where does it come from? And how do we use something like this to create perfect bodywork on the car? Harley Earl, a legendary designer within GM in the 1930s, become frustrated going from a two-dimensional sketch on paper to a three-dimensional form. He needed a way to creatively free form, free model, sculpt in real time. Clay was the answer. Back then they used splines, splines made out of hardwood. They used the splines to sculpt the clay. We're working on a three-dimensional object. We're working on this big sculpture. It happens to be an E-type Jag today. However, this started as a two-dimensional sketch, turned into a three-dimensional sculpture with an artist and a modeler. The spline gives us the ability to create three-dimensional. The designer, along with the clay sculptor, would create this form. They would physically stand there with a tool like this in hand, put it on the surface, and scrape the clay to create that form. Then that would be turned into manufacturing, put down the assembly line, pump out a car at the other end. It's that clay model, it is the true reflection of what the designer intended. If we, as the person refinishing the car, can go back to what the designer's intent was, control this form, control this shape, get every element of that surface running exactly where it needs to be, back to what the designer intended, we can make our repairs, do our body work, and perfect the surface as fast and as accurate as possible. We're not just fixing a dent, we're not just making a repair, we're going back to what the designer intended from day one. We've made our splines out of a composite material, resistant to solvents, abrasives, and all the chemicals that correspond with refinished products. So same tool, different material for this refinish application. Our definition of spline effectively is a, a thin piece of material that's used to smooth a surface of fixed points. But basically a spline it's not an arc, a sweep, or a radius. It's not some form of gauge. It's not a sweep used for coach building. It's not a mathematical ellipse that can be calculated. A spline can taper, it can flex, it can twist, and it can accelerate. But in its essence is to make a smooth transitioning curve off some given hard points. How does that relate to refinish? Those hard points 
it's like a giant dot to dot drawing. We are trying to make the surface of this car as smooth and graceful as possible based off some fixed points. Those fixed points, generally our panel edges or areas of steel that we can't change. When it comes time to refinish the car, our goal is going back to the designer's mind. We've talked about this already. We've mentioned in its purest form, the clay sculpture, you know, five meter long object. Don't know what that translates to foot, 15 foot, 16 foot vehicle. It's a sculpture that someone's created. It didn't have these panel gaps and joins and different things. It went from headlight through to taillight. Back when someone sketched this thing, they had a piece of paper. These nice, beautiful lines across the paper, scribble in some tires, then added some details. However, the essence of that car is headlight to taillight. And the spline makes a smooth, graceful character of surface. We can do different things. We can have a surface like this. We can put foil on it, put a reflective surface on it to simulate the finished result. But ultimately, most commonly, we don't get to see a glossy, finished car until it's painted. And that's when we see the imperfections. We need to work to a point where we can control shape and know that it's right before it's painted. We've talked about it before. The job of this spline is to make the surface of this car as smooth and graceful as possible. These highs and lows are the imperfections that we want to mediate. We're trying to find the most beautiful fluid line between those highs and lows to get a graceful reflection in our paint. On something like this, it's a very long, slim car. Right up here on the shoulder, there'll be a band of light. Once this thing's glossy, once it's painted, once it's out there in the world, getting the reflection right through here, we're gonna get this nice, beautiful line tracking down the length of that car. That small amount of flex, that small amount of bend that the spline gives us, gives us the ability to put onto the surface and check where we get this fluid shape. So, so important. These are the things in a design studio that the clay modelers, along with the designers, just spend thousands and thousands of hours perfecting with this tool in clay. We can use this tool for our filler, for our sanding, for our metal work, to check the shape. Ultimately, that's what we're doing. We're just perfecting shape, but we need to know exactly how this tool is to be put onto the shape to get that right. And this is what it's about. This is what this workshop, this video series, this class, what we teach is all about. It's going back into the mind of a designer, back into the design studio. What was their intention of the clay model when they made this, when they created this form? We can make it so it's right. By the time paint hits this, absolute perfection.